Hi guys, and welcome to solving a quadratic equation with two imaginary solutions. And remember that an imaginary number has a square root of a negative number in it because we can't really take the square root of a negative number because when we would square that, you know, whatever we would get as our answer, whenever we would square that by definition, it would have to be positive and not a negative, okay? So we're going to see that we're going to end up with an imaginary number, something that we made up because in math it's useful to have, but not because it could actually exist. All right, so let's take a look at this, right? We're going to start by plugging in a, b, and c into the quadratic formula. So we've got x equals negative b, so that's going to be a negative 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so we've got 6 squared minus 4 times a. Now it doesn't look like there's an a here. Make sure you don't put that a, a is x, okay? a is not x. If you look over at the quadratic form, uh, the, the general form of a quadratic equation over here, the x squared is its own thing, okay? a is the coefficient. So there's really kind of an invisible 1 right here, right? If they don't show us what the coefficient is, it's always 1. So a is going to be 1, so we've got 4 times 1 times our c, which is 10. All right, so now we're going to put it over 2a, right? So we're going to have over 2 times 1. And now we simplify so that we can solve it. x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared is 36 minus 4 times 1 is just 4 and 4 times 10 is 40. So we get that it's 36 minus 40 over 2 times 1, which is just 2. Okay, so let's simplify it again. We get that x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 40, because it's a smaller number minus a bigger number, is going to give us negative 4 over Two. Okay, and remember how we were talking about the square root of a negative number? We can't take the square root of negative 4, okay? So say, you know, you're like, oh, clearly it's going to be negative 2. Well, if you do negative 2 times negative 2, right, you square it, then that would give you positive 4 and not negative 4. And so the way that we take care of that in math is just by putting a little i for imaginary. So this is going to turn into x equals negative 6 plus or minus so we take the square root of 4, so that's 2, okay, and we're going to call it 2i, okay, so we're going to say 2i to take care of that little negative there, and then over 2, okay, and so now here is where we split this into our two different imaginary answers. So we're going to have negative 6 plus 2i over 2, okay. So we just divide this. This would be negative 6 divided by 2 is going to give us negative 3 plus, and then 2i divided by 2 is just 1i, so just i. So we have negative 3 plus i. This is one of our answers, this is one of the solutions. Okay, and then the other solution is going to be negative 6 minus 2i over 2. And again, we're going to just do the same thing here. So negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 2i divided by 2 is minus i. All right, and so our other answer is going to be negative 3 minus i. So here are our two answers, negative 3 plus i and negative 3 minus i. Now, if you want to for these, you can actually just go ahead and simplify here. So we could, instead of writing these two answers out, if you had wanted to, you could have just divided by 2 here. So you would have gotten that x equals negative 3 plus or minus, right? So that's negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1. So it would just be negative 3 plus or minus 1i or just negative 3 plus or minus i. You can write your answer just as this as long as you're kind of comfortable with the fact that that's really talking about two different answers, negative 3 plus i and negative 3 minus i. And that's it.